good evening all on behalf of kpr institute of engineering and technology and eco club i welcome you all for the interaction session snake is the topic of discussion today for all this i have the feeling of fear we have snake the word snake is uttered and we obviously have the feeling of fear but today we are going to hear about snake from a different perspective and also about us preservation and rescue and how people will see the snake while we see the snake in front of us as well protection of animals is the order of the day our guest will talk about the preservation protection rescue of snakes which i consider as a rare talk now i pass on this discussion to our eco club members miss Shanmati and Ms. Kavya to introduce our guest and continue with the interaction with them. I hope this session will be exciting session for you all. Shanmati, please proceed. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, A.K. Priya, ma'am. So it is an honor today. Good evening to everyone and happy Sunday. I am Shanmati, Eco Club member, KPRIED. Almost the end of the day, but uh, we have we are here with a new beginning on on the webinar on snakes. Discover the amazing world of snakes by Mr. Surya Kirti, naturalist and snake rescuer. I'm Kavya Shri, member of Eco Club. I welcome you all for this amazing webinar conducting by our KPRIT Eco Club, and we welcome our beloved principal, ma'am, Dr. M. Akila, and all other staff coordinators. And last but not the least, my very own student friends. I'm glad to welcome you all. Yes, we all talk about wildlife and uh, sustainable development, but he is the person who actually does it. So we are proud having you here, sir. And uh, who does it? He is doing it astonishingly. And since uh, two, since it it was his second year, I mean, when he was a two-year-old boy, he has developed this uh, rescuing thing. And I, uh, without the, any doubt, it is developed from his father. who's snake shyam who's a veteran in conserving the snakes for almost 43 years and have successfully rescued 83000 snakes until now so we heartily welcome you sir and uh, it is an honor to host you today good evening shanmati it's an honor of mine too i welcome all of you for uh, joining me and uh, making me a part of your program today in the evening so what happens is the very moment when people hear about snakes the first thing that comes to their mind is fear the fear is basically because they wouldn't know how to identify a venomous or a non venomous snake and the only thing that scares them is what if it bites me you know they wouldn't know that the snake would move on on its own or maybe the snake wouldn't bite me they won't have this in their mind the first thing that comes to their mind is what if it bites me and i die so we are on a mission to get this off people's mind so that they have a dis- different perspective about snakes when it comes to conservation and snakes play a vital role in our ecology yeah so accepting it definitely snakes play a very good uh, part in our ecology so now you can present your uh, uh, we, i mean your presentation to our audience sir definitely well uh, i welcome you all to the awareness program and a uh, good evening so i have been handling snakes since i was a 3 year old boy and i got it from my dad i have been watching him rescue snakes and also conserving them for a better cause so he has rescued well about 83 to 85000 snakes in 43 years and uh, he's been he's continuing to do so and now i'm a part of that too so i myself have rescued about 6000 snakes till now and changing the perspective of people towards snakes like wherever i go for the rescue so as you can see in this presentation i just educate them about the particular snakes which is rescued and what is its role and what is its food habits what is the habitation which it lives in and why is it in our cities So let me do the introduction there are about 3000 snakes in the world 
3,000 species of snakes in the world, only which India is home to about more than 275 species of snakes. And every year, or every uh, three years, or in two years, we discover about two or three new species of snakes, just like we did last year, of the new wine snake and also the Arunachal pit viper, and in which only few of them are venomous. There are there are 75 more than 75 venomous species in India, in which only four are known to be encountered near human habitations, known as the big four venomous snakes of India, causing most of the snake bites and deaths in India. So everybody has this doubt that is snake a wild animal or not. So we consider tigers, leopards, gauze, and deers, and elephants as wild animals, but why not snakes? So it's just that the snakes are living with us in the cities, whereas the animals, the other wild animals, live in their own natural habitation, such as forest or tiger or reserves. And the natural habitat of a snake is the cities where we live in. Actually, this is the cities where we have converted or made or we have urbanized is their ancestral property. And we have taken over the land where we have converted them into buildings and sites and we are ruling over them. So the thing about snakes is they're, people usually get afraid because it doesn't have any limbs. Snakes are basically aquatic. Snakes were aquatic animals billions of years ago. And as they gradually became more and more terrestrial, they lost the use of their legs as they had no use of it, as they found no use of it. So what is so special about snakes? If you ever observe the snakes like flickering its tongue, it's basically because it is sensing the smell or taking the pheromones or the musk around it. And why does it do that? Snakes don't have a sense of smell through their nostril. They smell through their tongue and breathe through their nostril. So what happens is when it flicks its tongue out, the scent or the musk in the atmosphere sticks to the tongue. And when it pulls the tongue back in, there is a very important role a very vital organ which uh, has the sense organs that is known as the Jacobson's organs. So it can classify the scent of smell between different organisms, different species of snakes, temperature, and so on. Thus, it has been considered as a wild animal in the Anti Wildlife Prote in the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. So before we move on to the identification and to the snakes, I just want to convey you people like uh, what are the myths and what is misleading people to use snakes as props when it comes to business or maybe any mythological reasons. So here it is. As you all know, this is the red sand boa and it has so much value, so much price in the black market and the price may extend up to crores of rupees. And Thankfully and luckily, our forest department is working so hard on uh, taking the people out who are doing this, who are doing this illegal business when it comes to animals and thus contributing to the nature by saving and taking these lives and reserving, uh, releasing back to wherever they belong. So it, it has a misconception that the snake has two heads at each end where it switches its heads every six months once, whereas the snake has a head at its one side and the tail at the other. As the tail is very blunt, it almost looks like another head at another end. The second thing is Nagapanchami. Nagapanchami is one of the oldest and the most traditional festival ever since the epic of Mahabharata. People back then, the people back in those eras were very smart. They knew that people in our generation would cause destruction and loss to nature or wildlife. So they, they just resembled every animal in our country to every single god or deity. So that, you know, we pray them instead of hurting them or causing destruction to their species. But nowadays it is being misused. And sadly, on the day of Nagapanchami, we are killing more snakes than saving them as we are pouring milk, abundant amount of milk on the snake as well as their anthills by assuming that snakes drink milk. Snakes never drink milk. They are cold-blooded reptiles and they don't have to depend upon milk for survival as they are purely carnivores in nature. They are oviparous and oviviviparous too. Uh, sir, yes, that was a question from... Uh, uh... Nagmani is one of the uh, 
myth which is wandering in people's minds since decades and years and most of the movies have been influencing people that the snake gem or the nagmani exists in reality but as our country is home for a lot of ancient temples which is really old and where there are a lot of wildlife and trees people often see snakes especially cobras wandering around the temple areas so thus that gives them a confusion that the snake is guarding the treasure or carrying a gem and safeguarding it from any theft or robbery and this is again a misconception as snakes do not carry anything inside or outside of the head by the way the picture in the slide was a viral video where a chiku seed was forcefully cut open and inserted into the head and was been taken out again in the video but only the taking out part was shot then inserting so now let's move on to the non venomous snakes sorry to interrupt sir i've been rescuing shanmati uh, sir i uh, there was a question actually the snake fly you said they go i mean they live uh, sir am i audible which i've been rescuing since my childhood Uh, sir am i audible so this is known as the brahmini worm snake most of them are often confused to this snake as a small worm as this snake resembles a worm as this snake resembles a worm this is not a worm entirely yeah karthik no 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 sorry audible oh okay wait 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 yeah 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 okay. Surya sir, sorry to interrupt, but there was a question actually. Am I audible? Yes. So let's get back to the Brahmini worm snake. Uh, it is confused for a worm, Getting but it. although it's not a worm, if you have a closer look at it, it has shiny, smooth scales, scales with two black dots as its eyes. and this is one of the only snakes in the world with this parthenogenesis uh, here uh, which means uh, that hello the snake can lay fertilized eggs without needing a male although no males have ever been recorded and this particular small snake is almost found in everywhere including new zealand and ireland too where there are no other larger snakes than the brahmini moving on to the jumeril's black headed snake it has a black head with yellow collar yeah shanmati you can uh, type out your question yeah, i can hear you now surya so that uh, he can uh, see look at that yes, question sir. and he will answer it yes sir i will i will type it out yeah hello Yeah. Can you? Is it audible now? Yeah, yeah, it's audible. It's audible. Yes. Yeah, fine. Uh, Shanmati, you can speak now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Dumeril's black-headed snake is known as the black-headed snake because it has a black head with yellow collar, followed by a series of black dots starting from its neck till the end of its tail. It usually measures up to one and a half to two feet in length, and uh, getting a two feet long Dumeril's black-headed snake is very rare. so it basically con- consumes consumes geckos small skinks and sometimes other snakes for example smaller snakes than them for example the be- the worm snake so coming next to the rat snake rat snakes can measure up to 9 to 11 feet in length and that is very rare and it can live up to 12 to 16 to 18 years in their lifetime and these are the kind of snakes which are contributing us
so these are the snakes that are contributing us by keeping us alive as you all know every year 30 tons of food or food grains which we grow which the farmers grow are being eaten by rats and other rodents and there are other predators who prey on them but snakes hunt them down ambush them and catch hold of them and consume them on a regular basis a rat snake might eat up to 180 to 200 200 rats every year so if you can just imagine one rat snake eating 180 to 200 rats in a year and if there are about thousands of rat snakes think how many livestock are we saved are we uh, are, is being saved by these snakes so if we keep these snakes alive we stay alive too the checkered keelbacks are one of the most common snakes found everywhere in the country except for jammu and kashmir they are found in ponds lakes rivers fresh water and in almost everywhere they are terrestrial and aquatic partially arboreal but not not most found on trees uh, they usually live in isolated areas or even your human habitations the clutch of their eggs consists and vary from about 12 to 60 eggs and they hatch after about 55 to 67 days in period so moving on to the next snake is the green keelback the green keelback grows up to about 2 feet to 2 and 1/2 feet in length it basically swallows toads and frogs as a primary food source and they are found mostly in green areas or where there is where the place is rich in vegetation the egg clutch consists about 5 to 12 eggs and if you can have a look at the feeding this is how a snake feeds on its prey so what happens is uh the snake can feed anything which they feel can fit into their mouth so they basically grab on to the prey and gently move forth while keeping the prey still as this is a non venomous snake their instinct is to hold the prey catch hold of the prey very tightly in a firm grip just so that they don't get loose of the prey The buff striped keelback is one of the most common snakes found over here having a bright yellow neck with two parallel lines starting from its neck to the tip of its tail with horizontal red or blue bands and black bands along with them colors and sizes may vary as they lay up to about only 5 to 7 eggs at a single clutch they feed basically on frogs and small reptiles This is a common bronze back tree snake which can measure up to 5 feet long although that's very rare these snakes are very fast and swift and very quick when provoked they usually uh, open up their interscales and their interscales are blue in color which shows aggression when they puff up their body these snakes are arboreal in nature they are very less they're, they're less found on the ground Yeah, we have some questions here. Uh, can we ask it now or later? Uh, not about the flying uh, snake. No, not about that. It's about different question. Okay. okay, okay. So we have a question. Can you can you please tell me the question? Come up yeah. with the question. Yes, sir. Uh, there's a question like, I love snakes. I would like to learn more about it and pursue okay. snake rescuing. Is that possible? And what should I do? Okay. So. uh well there are a lot of people who are interested in rescuing snakes and conserving them for a better cause so if you really want to go to rescuing you can you have to first know about the identification of snakes and also uh what are the species of snakes that are around you you have to read more books build your skill set build your knowledge base about it so that you can know what are the snakes what are the species and types of snakes that are around in your city for example in in mysore city we have about 18 to 27 species of snakes so and i'm showing most of them to you and uh, explaining about them to you and you cannot pursue a career from snake rescuing it can only be a passion okay. i hope that's it 
Ya, ya. So, oh, this can is... I ask you some questions, sir? Like in between, sure, sure. there are questions. Uh, can I ask you? Yeah. Thanks. Sure, sure. Please, please ask me. What's the question? Uh, like, uh, when someone calls you for a snake rescue, what is the success yeah. percentage? What is the? Success percentage. How, uh, I mean, would you be able to get it or uh, sometimes you would have lost it? Like... Okay, so sometimes what happens is people out of fear, what they do, as soon as they see the snake, they just move away from the, from the location where the snake is hiding or where it's residing. What they do, they call me. So by the time I reach, it is usually 70% and 30% chances that I find the snake or I may not find the chain, uh, snake. But most of the snakes, I do get to rescue them. But it's only about, okay, per se, if I get about eight calls a day, I may not get two of the snakes as it manages to move out on itself or uh, the person will be too afraid to just watch and look at the snake wherever it is hiding. Okay, so that's it for now. I'll let you know if other person pop out. Sure, sure, sure. So uh, let's get back to the presentation. This is the common trinket snake and it is my most favorite snake. Uh, being diurnal and nocturnal in nature, these snakes swallow mice, geckos and other small uh, other snakes as well as their primary food source. And when the snake is provoked or if threatened, the snake lifts its neck up in an inverted S shape, opening its mouth wide like this as its defensive mechanism, just to show aggression and to warn the surrounding beings that don't mess up with my business or don't just, you know, disturb me or something like that. And this is a non-venomous snake as well, even though if it bites, nothing is gonna happen. And sometimes it is also mistaken for a false cobra. People usually, uh, 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 miscon misconfuse it. I mean, they get confused uh, to the snake for a cobra. <clears throat> Whereas this particular act is also known as mimicking or imitation. And it happens through learning from one another. The common cookie snake is nocturnal in nature, having a gray body with black bands with a V-shaped mark right on its head. And it is known as a kukri snake because its tooth are curved and very sharp, which is basically used to puncture and to swallow the, break open the eggs of other reptiles and birds as well. So this is primarily an egg eater, which consumes eggs throughout its life. If not the eggs, it swallows other small geckos and skinks, sometimes other snakes too. And the common wolf snake is the most common snake which I rescue regularly. I, I get to rescue about 25 to 30 wolf snakes in a week. So if at all I get a call after 7 p.m., Socho Ki, it's wolf snake because they're that common over here and they're vastly distributed in our cities. Very, and the color variations are very different. It has yellow bands, white bands. Sometimes we get wolf snakes which has no bands at all, which are purely black or brown in color. These snakes measure up to the largest, the longest one which I've rescued measured up to three feet and two inches where it's very rarely sighted. They're very good climbers and they can climb anywhere, any rough surface. They cannot climb plain walls, but if there is any given support, they can easily climb and they're found in all places in your houses and mostly in shoe racks. Unlike the common wolf snake, even the barred wolf snake is nocturnal in nature with completely black or brownish body having a rectangular yellow blocks of yellow uh, on white bands. The common sand boa or the rough scaled boa or also known as the earth boa lives most of its lives underground and it only comes up when it when freshly rains or uh, when it when it feels like feeding on something so these snakes primarily feed on lizards other snakes and mice as well and this is one of the only indian three snakes which are ovio viviparis which means it can give birth to young ones uh, where the young ones can the number can be somewhere between 4 to 8 or 3 to 7 young ones. Oh, 
yeah, of course, the snake is confused for a python, but it also resembles a Russell's viper, which is one of the big four venomous snakes. Venomous, uh, big four venomous snakes. I just got this question that it kind of looks like a python. So yes, it is often confused for python because it has the same blotches just like a python does, but only a python is larger than the sand boa. The sand boa can measure up to four feet in length or three and a half feet in length. And it has a very rough scales, not unlike the Python. Python has very smooth scales. Sir, again, there's a question like, uh, have you seen any anacondas? Like, is anaconda really, uh, I mean, found in India? Anacondas are basically endemic to South America in the Amazon rainforest. And uh, I have handled anaconda only once in Mysore itself. There is... Uh, an animal park called as the Planet Earth Aquariums in Mysore, where they have different kinds of species of snakes and also other animals and mammals as well. So a dear friend of mine just got a new anaconda over there and I was very over overwhelmed to handle an anaconda and that was my first ever time. So that's when I handled the first anaconda and uh, anacondas are not endemic to India, but they can grow up to... <coughs> A length of 25 to 28 feet long, and they are one of the they are the heaviest snakes that live on the planet. So, what was the length of the snake anaconda you handled? Oh, it was just a small baby, measured up to about two and a half to three feet long. That's all. So there is another so, question. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please come up with the next question. Like, there's another question. Uh, will snakes uh, die if it bites itself? Uh, where sometimes it has been recorded that the snakes have mistakenly bitten itself while catching its prey and it has died because only few snakes ha are immune to their own venom. Well, cobras are immune to their own venom. Even if one cobra bites another, they both survive. So it's not equal in each and every case. So, yeah, uh, for example, if I have to say the bush vipers, they have died biting themselves as far as I know and as far as I've come to do. Okay. So let's move on to the next one. Yeah. Unlike the Vitecus boa, I mean the common sand boa, the Vitecus boa has very smooth scales and is also a bit shorter in length than the common sand boa. Uh, same char characteristics and behavior, but the amount of number, the number of uh, young ones which is given birth to is more in Vitecus boa. It can extend up to 8 to 12. And this is the snake which I've mentioned earlier before that which is confused for a double-headed snake. So can you just find out which one of these two is the head? Like, can you make out? Uh, I guess on the top, I mean, the bended one on the top. Oh, the one on the top. But unfortunately, that is the tail. That is not the head. That is the tail. The one below it is the head of the snake. So as its tail is blunt in shape, it looks as though it has two heads, but it only has one head. And these snakes consume primarily on my, mice and other lizards, I mean garden lizards, for their food. And even they mostly live underground. Color, colors may vary, uh, vary from uh, uh, reddish brown to grayish color. Are these the snakes we uh, use for making leathers, like belts and shoes? Are these the ones? No, 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 no. In India, in India, well, I just got a question that if these snakes are used uh, to make leathers or belts or any product which is made out of leather. But if I have to say, snakes in India are not being threatened for branding or any other things, such as taxidermy. Taxidermy is basically using snake skin for uh, making materials. It's also called as uh, pelting as well. Uh, so what happens is in some parts of the country, snakes are captively bred so that their skin can be used to make leather. It's not only skin. There are other animals as well where foxes, polar bears, bears and elephants, tiger skin. So all these, all these of them are happening. But in some parts of the world, snakes are captively bred. So uh, they breed snakes just so that they can uh, take the skin out of them and skin them alive and use their skin for business. 
So it's basically pythons, anacondas, and boas, which are larger in size, which are used for that. So here I have a question for you. Yes, ma'am. So will snakes die if it bites itself? Uh, I already answered that question, ma'am. Have you just answered the question? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Yeah, yeah. So is there a study on snakes? Like we have a question. Yeah, the study on snakes is basically called as herpetology, where one monitors the behavior, the lifestyle of the snake, starting from its birth till its end of the life. So it is called as herpetology. Okay. Thank you. So you can continue with your presentation. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, this, as you very well know, is the Indian rock python. It measures up to about 11 to 14 feet in length. And for getting a 14 feet long python is very rare and they are nocturnals in nature. They consume and prey on anything which they feel can fit in their mouth as, as huge as a deer as well. And there are a few reported cases that these pythons have consumed humans as well. Uh, sometimes crocodiles too. Palm civets, hare and rabbit and uh, other small mammals are a part of its daily food habits. And at a single clutch, this particular, I mean, uh, Indian rock pythons can lay up to about 40 to 110 eggs. And <coughs> they, they stay coiled to their eggs until they hatch, thus giving it warmth and incubating them naturally. So I just want to ask you guys out before moving on to the semi-venomous snakes, which one among these snakes got the most attention of you? So if you have any, any interesting snake or the one which makes you so curious, please drop that on the comment section. <clears throat> now, I hope we can move on to the semi-venomous snakes. So if you suddenly have a look at this picture, you can't even make out where the snake is. And this is the level of camouflage the green wine snake has. And the snake is right here, here. It is purely diurnal in nature, having a horizontal pupil where it can have most of the vision clear and vast, having a pointed snout, often confused for plucking humans in the eyes. The snake doesn't pluck any humans in the eyes, nor anybody else. And even this is Oviovivi Paris, where the snake incubates its eggs inside the stomach and give birth to the young ones out. So the young ones may vary from 8 to 12 or 13, or sometimes it has been recorded to be 20 young ones. And the size may vary from 5 to almost 6 feet in length. They have a very long tail, they're arboreal in nature, and they spend most of its life on trees. Uh, how, how long does it live, like its lifespan? So as far as I know, in their natural habitat or in the forest, the snake doesn't have a particular lifespan as they'll be preyed any moment by any sort of birds, which by birds of prey. So it's not guaranteed that every snake lives to the fullest of its life, but until it's lived, until, until it's death, it at least maybe until it grows out to be an adult, it produces about uh, abundant amount of other snakes so that giving birth to young ones or, you know, laying the eggs. So as far as I know, captive snakes have lived up till a span of 18 to 22 years as well. It opens. Yes. And when the snake is provoked or threatened, it usually opens its mouth like this and the interscales open up to be white and black in color, thus showing aggression while puffing up its body with air, inflating air. And this is one of the snakes which have rare fang to have a good grip of its prey. So this mostly feeds on birds and other reptiles as well. And these snakes uh, are cannibalistic, which means they prey on other snakes, other smaller snakes as well. The common cat snake is known as a cat snake because it has its eye like a cat. Vertical pupil, has a vertical pupil. So this is nocturnal in nature and almost found between the dead leaves or under the dead leaves, 
coiling itself, dust warming itself, and it's mostly found on trees too. It's arboreal in nature too. So these snakes uh, lay about uh, three to seven eggs and food habits consist of geckos, skinks. And this is how it hangs itself. And the advantage of having a long tail gives them a firm grip to hold on to the branches of the trees. This is the ornamental flying snake or the ornate flying snake. So I had a question earlier, can snakes fly? That was a question mark. Yeah. Snakes cannot really fly. Snakes can only glide from a higher altitude to a lower altitude. And why is this called as a flying snake? And this snake can nearly glide up to 100 meters from a higher altitude to a lower altitude. That nearly makes it about 300 feet long in length, in distance. So what does it do is when it feels like it's being threatened or if it wants to catch hold of a prey for food or survival, it just jumps from the tree, flattening its body completely flat and gliding in the air, in the gliding in the air with the direction of the wind to a lower altitude. These snakes uh, prey on birds, smaller reptiles and geckos as well. Uh, if I have to say, uh, Mysore doesn't have flying snakes on a regular basis. It's not found in Mysore. But recently, about two months ago, we had a call that an ornate, fl ornate, ornate flying snake was uh, found in Mysore and it was spotted in Mysore. It became a very big news in the city that you know there are flying snakes in Mysore. And it also became one of the biggest myths that um, along with the pandemic, there are flying snakes too, uh, which would bite anybody and kill anybody on an instant. But we worked as long as as long as we could do it. We just worked hard on you know just taking all the myths away, and we got to rescue the snake and we convey people that this snake doesn't have any wings to fly; it only glides in the air. So, uh, how uh, how powerful is its vision? So, the flying snake's vision. How powerful is it? Uh, so, it is. It has the round pupil. Okay. So, which means that it is almost similar to us. It has a very good eyesight. It, it's dull when it comes to night. The vision is very poor when, it, when it's night, but it's a diurnal snake, which means that it is more active during the day and hunts mostly during the day and less at night. So, now let's move on to the big four venomous snakes, which are responsible for most of the snake bites in our country and also deaths in our country. Well, I needn't have to explain about this snake because every Indian has come to this snake at least once in their lifetime. And it is called as a spectacle cobra because it has a spectacle marking at the back of its hood, which looks like a pair of glasses. So that is, in, that is a morph, uh, that is an evolution of the morph where it is also confused as eyes, as false eyes. It is called as false eyes because the larger the eyes are, the bigger the animal looks. That is the law of nature. Just to uh, threaten or just to you know, warn its uh, predator or prey or somebody who comes to disturb it, the snake opens its hood as a defensive mechanism, thus warning them not to provoke it or not to try come near. And if you want to look at how the bite of a spectral cobra looks like, this is how it looks. So it can be very painful as well. You lose a lot of tissues and muscles. This snake is basically a neurotoxic. It can suffocate you to death within hours and you have about two hours to live and you have to count your minute and rush to the nearest hospital with anti-snake venom. But mostly they tell uh, you can easily cure a man who is bitten by this uh, native snake. Sir. Yeah. What, what, what? Come again, come again with the question. Like you can easily, uh, I mean, rescue a person who okay. has been bitten by this cobra. It's not only cobras. See, it's not about rescuing the person who has been bitten. He has to move to the hospital in the shortest duration time of, uh, at possible. Because uh, as you get bitten, if you start panicking, your blood, flow, your blood pressure get, gets high and the venom gets flowing faster. I mean, the blood flows faster in your body, thus uh, helping the venom to reach your heart and brain faster. So the longer, the, the sooner you reach the hospital, uh, you live. Actually, so I'll come to the snake. Indian 
movies uh, all in our kollywood all in our kollywood movies they show uh-huh. like uh, when a person is bit by this snake like nagapam we tell it here uh-huh. so yeah yeah, yeah. cobra yeah nagapam yeah around the, they th- tie a knot around the place <laughs> <laughs> okay okay so i'll just do one thing uh, i'll come to the do's and don'ts after snake bite or how to prevent snake bites later Uh, I have slides uh, uh, about that too, so I'll just cover it up. And uh, please don't forget to ask that particular question when I come reach that slide. Okay? Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is how the bite of a spectral cobra looks like, and only two ml of venom is enough to kill a human and a fully grown adult. And this is the Russell's viper. which is confused for pythons as well and even pythons are confused for russell's viper even sandboas are confused for russell's viper or pythons so basically when we receive call a rescue call people usually say that uh, we have found a python over here could you please come and rescue it but when they take out the name python we already know that it's a russell's viper or a common sandboa this snake is highly hemotoxic which can just kill all your muscles and tissues and uh, blood blood cells Uh, it's going to totally spoil your blood stream and it has about 2 cm long fangs which can go deep inside your tissue and this is how its fangs and the bite looks like so the bite can cause you immediate gangrene if not treated in time and rushing to the nearest hospital is the best way you can live so the fangs of snakes just acts like a syringe the injection which we use on a regular basis it is hollow on the inside sir actually there's a question yes please 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 do uh, a year back my uncle got bitten by a snake and when we took him to the hospital the doctor okay. said that he has died of heart attack and not because of the venom why is this uh, why this happens so yeah as you all know uh, people tend to get panic the moment they get bitten by a snake but that is not the first thing they should do first thing is you have to remain as calm as possible because it is just a snake and it's not going to kill you instantly more than the snakes you have to be afraid of electricity and gas cylinders which you have in your house which can cause you immediate death after blasting or electrocuted right so uh, what happens is as you tend to think more when you get bitten by the snake you feel like you're dying you're dying you're dying you're dying you're going to die so what happens is that psychologically impacts on your body and on your brain that you're going to die sooner and you're not going to survive that totally ensures that you're going to die in sometime soon and which causes an heart attack out of panic so you don't really die out of heart attack but you suffocate and uh, you just have gangrene and muscle and tissue damage sometimes heart attacks are possible too if the person even if it's not even if the person is not panicked okay i guess they have got the answer yeah okay let's move on to the next one this is the common crate being the most venomous snake in our country it has all four toxins which are neurotoxin hemotoxin cytotoxin and cardiotoxin basically nocturnal in nature this snake is cannibalistic which means that they feed on other snakes and also their own species of snakes if only they don't get food in time uh, apart from snakes they usually uh, swallow small mice geckos and other small uh, mammals such as squirrels this snake grows up to a feet of, uh, length about 5 feet long and it has a shiny black body with double white bands starting 2 inches after the head and what happens after the crate bites is your pupil gets locked you die out of suffocating and sometimes there are many cases which we have recorded that there are no bitten symptoms when it comes to a crate bite and you can't even you don't even feel it biting you because it has that small teeth if you can uh, take a look at the left slide it has very small teeth even smaller than the tip of the needle so you wouldn't even feel it piercing your skin and after 2 hours you may end up in coma if not treated in time the soskel viper the soskel viper can grow up to 2 feet in length they come in different colors such as uh, gray uh, reddish brown and also sometimes dark brown in color they have a plus marking on top of their head 
which might also mean that you'd go straight to Jesus if it bites you. So, uh, uh, even this snake is ovio viviparis, which gives to live young birth, uh, uh, live young ones. And uh, the, has, uh, the babies may vary from two to four or five in number. And this is how the babies look like. They're very small in size. They measure up to about three or four inches in length. And when it's threatened, it usually sidewinds its body, just, just rustling on the floor. And this is what happens when a sauce kill, kill viper bites you. You start bleeding in your gums and your throat gets coagulated, it gets blocked and you die out of suffocation. So these are the general symptoms of snake bites which usually happen in, which is common in everyone's body. So you can just have a brief look for about two minutes. So your vision gets blurry, you, you have rapid pulse, low blood pressure, severe shock, and uh, your body starts, uh, doesn't coordinate, like you start stammering, you can't even speak, and uh, you feel very thirsty. You feel like you're, you're puking or vomiting, discoloration, burning sensation, and as well as swelling as well. Here is the first aid first thing. So the only pass possible way of saving a person's life is by only the anti-snake venom, which has to be injected to the bloodstream, to the nerves, uh, to the IV of a person. And uh, the first thing what you should do after getting bitten is not to panic, which most people do. So first thing is you, you shouldn't actually give an opportunity for the snake to bite you. That only happens if you try to mess around with it or try to provoke it. And sometimes it's purely purely accidental as most of the farmers are dying each year because of snake bites and Brussels viper are responsible for the most number of bites and deaths in India. So they usually work in paddy fields. They don't even have the facility of gum boots or footwear. That's when they step everywhere. And if there is a Brussels viper, if they step right on it, they would definitely get bitten by the viper. So, so in villages like those, uh, they just suck out the venom like the native uh, doctor, they so they call them. They okay. just the, the venom. Uh, is that a good practice for first day? So yeah, even even I have seen in some South Indian movies that uh, the heroine or the actress is being bitten by the cobra or some other snake, and the hero just rushes in from a bike, flying from a mountain, and he just lands on the floor, and then he starts sucking the blood out of her hand, and then you know the girl is saved but it doesn't really work that way. And most of them have a question that if, she, if they should cut their hand after getting bitten in the bitten spot, no, you shouldn't do that. The first thing you should do is not to panic. The second thing is you have to keep your hand or the bitten area immovable. If you move it rapidly, then the chances of blood flowing and the venom reaching to your heart and brain is much more faster. And, uh, there's and another in question. some cases, in, in some cases, as you mentioned, that the native doctors cure it or by sucking it. Sometimes what happens is the snake doesn't envenomate us. I'll give, I'll, I'll give you one good reason why. Yeah. Because we aren't any predator or any prey for the snake. So venom is very important for the snake. Just like we have our saliva for digestion, just like a snake has its venom for digesting its prey and to kill its prey, uh, for its uh, survival. So it knows that injecting the venom on us is no use for the snake. So what does it do? Just just for uh, you know, uh, a mock charge, it just gives a dry bite, which means that it bites you, but it doesn't inject any venom in your body. And the lethal dose uh, for a cobra is about 2 mg. And if that much amount of venom is injected in your body, 
the venom gets equally distributed to every kilo of your body so suppose if i'm 60 kilos so 0.032 mg of venom gets distributed equally to each part of my body so if you're heavier you have a 10 minutes or 20 minutes much more time bonus if you if only you're not panicked panicked so the first thing you should not get panic when you get a yes, snake bite yes definitely you shouldn't panic because yes, snakes do, snakes are defensive in nature they're not aggressive in nature if snakes were aggressive and if they bit every human they used to see or if they come across our population wouldn't have reached 150 crores in a span of short time right yeah so there's another question like can you grow some uh, plants to avoid uh, uh, snakes coming into your house or can you throw some pesticides over to stop invading snakes no you cannot do any such thing because you cannot stop snakes from entering your house as i mentioned earlier snakes came to the planet or came into existence before we humans did so it has more rights to live on the planet more than we do and it has a better purpose to serve on the planet than we do all we are doing is just watching netflix and chilling and doing that doing this but we are only causing destruction to the nature whereas the snakes are saving our lives by saving our livestock and maintaining a balance between the uh, pest like uh, rodents and frogs as well so what happens is if you believe or if someone tells you that there is a particular plant or some pesticide which keeps the snake away that wouldn't work because i have had similar experiences <coughs> excuse me uh, i have had similar experiences where uh, certain plants are sold in the name of anti snake plants so they are being planted on and the person just called me up and he said uh, i have planted this plant about uh, i've planted this about 2 days or 3 days ago so but still i find snakes and why is it that that way so i just tell them that see the place where you have constructed your buildings is their own natural habitat so they come wherever they feel is suitable for them as they only enter your habitation for four basic reasons one is for food like frogs geckos toads and mice second one is temperature if it's too warm or too cold it's vice versa if it's too hot it gets into a cooler place if it's too cold it gets into a hotter place and that is why the snakes are coated with scales so that they are protected from warm and cold temperatures both and the last thing is a safety from its predators it can be consumed by any predator any time possible i mean in any time so that's why it looks for safe places like under the ground or somewhere where we have stacked something under the staircase in our buildings or in the shoe rack inside the house outside the house it might have come about 3 or 4 days earlier but we have noticed it just now it's purely coincidental and if you hadn't watched this snake the snake would have moved out of the house on its own right let's come to the longest venomous snake on the planet which is of course the king cobra which is also known as ophiophagus hanna in scientific terms uh so <clears throat> the king cobra is both diurnal and nocturnal in nature having a completely black body with yellow bands and having a yellow belly with black bands so these snakes have about they 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 measure about 1 1 and 1/2 feet when they're born and they can grow up to 14 feet in length so these snakes can lay about uh 25 to 40 eggs at a single clutch and why is it called as a i mean why 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 is it called as ophiophagus in scientific terms so i'll just give you an explanation why the king cobra feeds on other snakes as its uh, it has other snakes as its primary food habit so it usually consumes other snakes thus even controlling having control over the other snakes or species population too and it basically consumes rat snakes cobras and larger snakes where it can fill its belly sometimes king cobras can uh, consume king cobras too and this is how it looks on a on a closer look and the king cobra has about 15 ml of venom stored in it 
not more toxic than a spectacled cobra but it can kill a human in about 6 minutes and only about 6 or 7 snake bite deaths have occurred since about 30 to 35 years so this is the snake where uh, humans get kills the least minute possible sir yes 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 in india yes because see the the venom is not much toxic than a cobra but the amount of venom injected in you is more so what happens is the king cobra doesn't just bite and leave you what happens is if it bites you like this it does this thing called bite walking so it grabs hold of your arm and it just walks while biting you thus shifting its jaws from uh, one position to another and uh, he loves doing have that you ever i feel got a king cobra sir have you ever rescued a king cobra uh, yes i have handled a uh, 12 feet long king cobra and that was the first ever time i handled it about 3 uh, years ago uh in the beginning in the beginning i was uh i was a little bit nervous because it is the longest venomous snake and there is no anti venom for the snake in india there are only there is only anti venom for four common snakes which are venomous in india that is the before venomous snake so yeah but these snakes don't bite on a regular basis that's why you see a lot of rescuers a lot of people messing mess, mishandling this snake like they're using a toy or a prop or something like that so uh, i'd recommend to stop doing that and uh, i i humbly request the forest department to take action against people as such because i get to see a lot of videos where people are mishandling king cobras well there are a few rescuers who has been rescuing king cobras since decades and are in conserving in and are successful in conserving their population and their uh, uh population so uh, the king cobras are mainly endemic to northeast india as well as the western ghats that is karnataka kerala uh, karnataka and kerala and uh, their venom is highly neurotoxic so talking about the venom there's a question like mm-hmm. in mayura empire uh, chanakya was giving a small portion of snake venom daily to the king from his childhood okay. to improve okay. his resistance to poison how is it possible okay. i guess that is a myth isn't it sir um well if i have to tell you people back then had special abilities right so people were i mean the people who existed in that period of time are now worshiped as gods to us right so they had their own special abilities and uh, to be frank the venom can be ingested and no harm would happen to the body unless you have ulcers or any cut wounds or openings in your mouth where the venom gets into your blood stream so mainly the venom shouldn't get into your blood stream you can actually uh, drink the venom okay yeah. okay sir okay. but i would recommend not to do any of such things this is purely for information i do not recommend that okay sir thank you yes have you drunk it oh no 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 i see i haven't uh, i don't want to misuse snakes for extracting venom or something like that i haven't even imagined of extracting venom out of the snake because it's totally out of the box my job is only to make sure the snake is safe causing no harm to it rescuing it from the rescue location and leaving it wherever it belongs to the nearby location where there are no buildings or houses where it can live freely where humans feel they are not threatened by the snakes and they don't kill it unnecessarily so that is my job only i do i have nothing to do with snake venom or anything else and it's purely offensive and it's not it's a non available offense if anybody tries to mess around with snakes for venom so this is how the nesting happens the mother gathers all the dead leaves and makes it into a pile and lays her eggs inside the nest and just covers the uh, dead leaves up on the eggs so that you know it is it acts as a natural incubator and guards the eggs with her life so the hatchlings will be out in 60 to 75 days and uh, it lays about uh, 25 to 40 eggs at a single time reproduction so how does this reproduction take place reproduction basically happens through chemical communication 
where female snakes release the musk or a pheromone through their cloaca cloaca is basically the anal plate which is below the anal plate of a snake so what they do is the female snake wherever it travels around wherever it goes around it leaves a particular musk of scent where more males like about for one female there would be about 3 to 4 males or about 10 to 15 males which would follow the scent to mate with the female and as mate uh, as male snakes uh, cross the same path they have a combat between each other while they're trying to win a combat by pushing and pinning each other down the one which gets tired and stressed out or maybe exhausted is the loser and the one who wins gets to mate with the female after mating in about 2 months or 2 and a half months the eggs are completely developed to lay and after the eggs are laid the hatchlings comes out in a span of 45 to 70 days depending upon the species of snakes as well each species of snakes varies in size and uh uh and numbers of the eggs which are laid so if few snakes uh if most of the snakes are oviparous which means which lay eggs there are a few snakes which are ovo viviparous as i mentioned snakes three snakes in india give to live birth give live birth to young ones which are russell's viper green wine snake and uh, the common sand boa under russell's viper even the saw scale viper gives birth to young ones but that is considered as the viper family and a viper can give birth to about 10 to nearly 75 to 80 young ones at a single clutch so i have a question which snake can kill the human in the least time possible so that is definitely the inland taipan which is in central asia uh it's one bite can is enough to kill an adult human in about in a span of 10 or 15 minutes or so so these are the snakes which look similar on the on the left you have a russell's viper which is venomous and a python which is non venomous but both of them share the same characteristics just like you can observe the triangular head which they both have they have the same specific markings on top of their head and even the blotches on their body if you see the russell's viper has a chain like pattern whereas the the indian rock python has patches and blotches the blotches uh, may vary in color from yellowish uh to uh, black in color so if we take a look at this the snakes which have bands it almost resembles a common crate on top you see the common crate which is highly venomous and 14 times more toxic than a cobra the common crate is 14 times more toxic than a cobra whereas the common wolf snake and the kukri snake are non venomous in nature and all three of these snakes are nocturnal in nature which puts people in a confusion that this is a uh that every snake is a crate so i have another question uh have any snakes chased me and is there any interesting story that you can share with us so once what happened was uh, i got a rescue call in mysore uh, it was in uh, during the summer season and uh, snakes tend to be very defensive in summer season as the temperature will be too hot and they don't like to be handled they stress out very quickly so it was a very small passage uh, where its width was about just 1 and 1/2 to 2 feet and i had to just uh, walk sideways just to get to the snake it was a very big cobra and as i went near it it just opens its hood and uh it just started coming towards me i went back and back and back i just walked backwards and then i finally got to pick up the snake very safely and i bagged him so that was my first ever chase which happened by a cobra molting so what is basically molting or it is also called as uh shedding and also uh egg egg dive egg dive is 
So why does this happen? Why does this take place in a snake? Well, shedding is very vital, plays a very vital role in snakes as shedding uh, is the process where the snake gets uh, its organs developed and to grow in length and in size and in shape. So if you take a look at uh, the left side, that is before the shedding where you can see uh, the older skin is peeling out and the eyes have discolored. It's just a layer of a small plastic thin layer on its skin. And uh, if you take a look at the right, that is after shedding where its body looks very shiny. If other uh, snakes shed... Talking about shedding, we have a question. Yes, please tell uh, me. I see snake in my garden at least once in a month in the same okay. place. But I have okay. not seen any snake so far. Am I in danger? Okay. So what happens is there are a few specific places, uh, places where... The snakes has been raised and lived over there ever since it has out of the egg. So what does it do is uh, to grow in length and in size, the snakes has to uh, peel their uh, skin off, which means, which is called as uh, shedding or molting. So what happens is uh, it usually finds a rough surface and it just rubs its lower jaws while the shed skin peels open like this and the snake just crawls forward and the peel just remains over there where the snake just moves forward. So it just sheds wherever it feels is comfortable and it doesn't mean that if there is a shed skin of a snake lying over there, you're not in danger. It doesn't mean that you're in danger because it has shed the skin wherever, uh, rough, uh, wherever it has found that it is a rough surface and it has peeled it off. Well, maybe if you can send me a picture of the shed skin, I can identify the snake for you and you're not in danger. Just don't worry. As this is the winter and rainy season over here in uh, my locality, uh, I usually get most of the calls uh, of snakes where they are hidden inside the footwear and under the mat under the carpet uh, near the door. So I request you just to make sure you have a torch or a headlamp after you walk around after 7 p.m. So moving on to the next thing, the reproductive organ of a snake. So on the left side, it is a male, which has two hemipennis. And on the right side, a female has just a shallow opening. So what happens is during the mating season, uh, after mating, uh, the uh, female develops the eggs in about... Uh, 45 to 60 days and lays them and the eggs take about uh, uh, two months or two and a half months to hatch. Sir, where is this uh, exactly uh, present in the body? Like uh, in the middle of the body or to the end? No, 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 no. This is basically, if you can see in the right uh, slide, it is basically located near the tail. That's what I want. Oh, so there. So if you just bend the tail open, you can see the opening. Whereas if the snake is straight, you will you'll not be able to see the opening. It's called as the anal plate. So suppose this is a tail. There is a small piece of scale which is overlapped, and if you bend it, opens up like this. Okay. Okay. Sir. Did you get that point? Did you get my point? Yes. Yes, I got it. Yeah. So. Uh, And, and uh, uh, I, yeah, please continue. And uh, snakes actually don't have ears, but how does they dance to the instrument which is played? Or is it a myth again? Oh, sorry, come again? Like snakes do not have ears, no, sir. Like, uh, yes, they don't yes, hear, yes, yes, yes. But they dance exactly, to the yeah. instruments played by the persons. So is it uh -huh. again a myth or... Yeah. So, okay, I'll explain what happens. Uh, so, snakes are totally deaf. They don't have ears. They don't have the hearing ability. So, what happens when a person plays the instrument is he is not hypnotizing the snake, whereas he is hypnotizing the people watching it just so that he can make them believe that snakes can hear to the sound and the snake dances to it. Whereas if you can observe, he makes these movements of the instrument which is playing, so the snake reacts to the movements of the instrument which is playing, whereas not to the sounds. And snakes can only get to know by the vibration of the ground 
and not through anything else no matter how loud you scream the snakes can't hear you unless you make any physical physical gestures or movements snakes so are very sharp eyes right oh okay so what so are the gestures, eat... uh, when you see a snake on board what are the gestures you should do sir like to protect yourself so that the snake doesn't think you're going to hit it or something no see the snakes uh, basically they have this fear that i'm going to be killed or i'm i they feel threatened almost all the time see they are not like lions or tigers roaming around freely in the jungles they live most of their life underground uh, keeping themselves hidden for a longer time and they're barely unnoticed and why do you think snakes in mysore city are found more and uh, why do you think my dad has rescued more than 83000 or 85000 snakes and i have rescued more than 6000 snakes in a span of so much less time it's because their their habitat is being destroyed but even though their habitats are being destroyed the snakes are finding themselves uh, they are adapting to the city lives that's why we are finding more and more snakes over here and even their population is on the increase so this is the season where the cobra hatchlings will be out and uh, on the first batch of hatchling we almost rescued about 85 hatchlings in a span of 4 or 5 days me and dad together so we were constantly on the move we used to leave our house at 7 o'clock in the morning we both used to get different different calls from different different localities we used to just run we never used to get to have food at all from morning 7 till evening 9 o'clock 10 o'clock 11 o'clock we were constantly on the move and even just so even we have that concern that the people might kill the snake before we reach the location so we have to sacrifice all our food and all our personal life all our desires out so ma'am has asked the question that uh, snakes will die according to the season like summer no 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 no, no. there is no such thing that snakes are going to die uh, seasonally it's only after their complete living after their metabolism rate gets low after their organs age just like how we humans do even they die but getting to see uh, a snake having a natural death is a very very rare sight very rare sight so by this i conclude and come to my last slide if at all you guys have got any doubts or questions or any answers or anything where i could learn from you people you can surely tell me or i can learn from you So yes sir moving on to the question and answer session like yes. uh, there's a question uh, do rescuers like you gain immune to snake venom because of frequent bites like when you rescue it have you ever got bitten by a snake i have been bitten by a non venom snake but i haven't been bitten by venom snakes okay. well uh, first thing is i don't allow myself to mishandle the snake for the snake to bite me in return so it is basically newton's third law for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction so if the snake is hurt it bites me back if it's comfortable and if it's uh, very gently handled the snake wouldn't bite you but uh, that is not with all the snakes because every snake have different different behavior right uh, so uh, i've been bitten by non venomous snake and i do get bitten by non venomous snakes on a regular basis but there is no chance where you can get used to where you can get immune to get uh, bitten by venomous snakes oh, so sorry. because that happens through your blood stream if you're bitten over here it enters your nervous system and your blood stream whereas there are types of venom which are uh, cardio toxic neurotoxic hemotoxic cytotoxic mutotoxin and there are a lot of other toxins which uh, snakes have so it can affect you so when you But study about are... the snake you also study about the human body as well yes uh, so what happens is uh, most of the time when people are bitten by snakes they usually consult us first because they wouldn't know how to identify the snake or by looking at the bitten area or the marking so suppose uh, wait, let me grab a book and a pen okay <coughs> so suppose if it's a cobra the bitten mark looks something like two dots can you see yeah 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 two dots uh, otherwise or otherwise it's going to look something like this one dot and one scratch okay 
so there are various different things that uh, has a uh, in snake bites uh, so you can just identify by the distance between two fangs of the species of snakes and uh, is it venomous or non venomous you can just do that very easily because uh, as they have consulted my dad for over 3 or 4 decades uh, because of snake bite uh, uh, casualties or the victims come to the hospital uh even i've been joining alongside him and even now i've gained a bit of expertise on how to identify the species of snakes just by looking at the bitten mark yeah but it takes a veteran to do it right sir yes yes but even though if we are sure that it is a snake it may not have uh, have to be but if it's venomous we usually classify them by the symptoms which they are going through so severe I... swelling sever- severe swelling happens only in cobras and russell's viper where the bitten area swells up to this much big and it is it feels discolored and you feel tremendous amount of pain you feel like you're losing your vision you feel like you're suffocating your muscles will be twitching you won't have coordination between your body and your mind your your mouth or your tongue keeps stammering you feel a lot of you feel a lot of thirst so there are a lot of different and various aspects about that i have a question sir yes like please, uh... do uh, do snake uh, live without food if it is so how long it can live uh, also do a snake drink water of course a snake drinks water every living animal land animal or aquatic animal they need water to survive and water we all were made of water even the single cell organisms first developed from water the planet the water itself was the first thing that developed on our planet so without water we wouldn't have existed so water is one of the most uh, functional keys in nature so <clears throat> uh the snake just flicking its tongue on the portion of the water doesn't mean that the snake is drinking it when the snake drinks water it usually uh, has its jaws uh, it usually makes an action like this it usually moves its lower jaws while drinking so that's when you get to know if a snake is drinking water or not and a snake can survive as long as about 35 to 50 days without food that's pretty much do snakes uh, swim snakes can swim well there are a certain few snakes which are very bad swimmers they can swim if they need to but some of them are way too bad and some of them are very good with swimming and some of them can stay underwater until 15 or 20 minutes of time without even coming to take a breath so those are basically the keelback snakes which are checkered keelback rat snake buff striped keelback green keelback uh, and many other keelbacks as well they are uh, mostly found in cool regions where there is a fresh water or a stream or a pond or a lake okay so can snakes climb on wall uh without any firm grip they cannot climb plain walls but if they do have any rough surface on the walls they can definitely climb up but also there has to be a purpose if it has to fly uh, if it has to <clears throat> climb snakes are not crazy like us to so just climb and jump over things or do this or do that doing parkours and stuff so if there is a lizard or a gecko like at the edge of the wall what it does is it goes there following the scent or the pheromones of the lizard just to grab hold of it if only there is a rough surface of the wall it just gets a good grip it goes up Okay. Yes, there is another question. Like, uh, does snakes feel lonely? Do they feel lonely? Maybe. Um, no, snakes do not feel lonely, but they do have emotions. Snakes have emotions because without emotions, snakes cannot mate. Snakes cannot produce uh, eggs or young ones or give birth to young ones. Or neither the chemical chemical communication will happen. So snakes don't have uh, a lonely feeling, whereas they are independent creatures who live their whole life just after hatching out of the egg by by themselves there are no snakes which live in groups in india uh well if i have to say they only meet when it's a mating period until then they just grow in length shed their skin consume their food and drink water and change their uh, locations uh, according to the temperature and climatic conditions Okay, so that's very well put. So uh, there's a craziest question. Uh, can I yes. have my snake as a pet? And in India, okay. 
can you have snake as pets in india definitely you can if you want to look at yourself in jail after two or three days you can do that because uh, indian snakes are not meant to be kept as pets but there is a lot of other fancy snakes which can be kept as pets which are basically exotic so uh, what people do is they get snakes imported from other countries to india and they captively breed them just to sell them for people who are as crazy as the person who asked the question to me yeah okay pretty well uh, he's actually maybe he would have his uh, thoughts on rescuing snakes as his career maybe no 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 well there are two kinds of people one who loves snakes one who rescues snakes so uh both of them are differently classified so it's out of love he is asking so that if he can keep one snake as a pet but definitely not indian snakes there are ball pythons reticulate not not reticulated python green tree pythons there are corn snakes there are uh, uh many more species of snake garter snakes there are variety in, and they are in different colors as well actually in canada they see uh, snakes more frequently than our country maybe than or not than our country but they see it mm-hmm. frequently and they don't get mm-hmm. panicked or something they just allow the snakes to go so do you so think uh, they person- have this they have this perspective of coexistence okay and we indians are very narrow minded we don't think twice the first thought which comes becomes the final decision so we wouldn't give a second thought that okay even snakes should live along us we only think that ah hamara bachche hai we have a lot of kids what if it bites our kids and all that we are too concerned about ourselves whereas we are not giving a damn to wildlife i'll tell you if we even did a uh, even if we did give a damn to wildlife we wouldn't have devastated the whole forest just to come up with railway lines or any other buildings or infrastructures or restaurants or resorts as you see there are a lot of resorts near forest areas and buffer zones while why why is why are the why are resorts necessary like we are not even leaving the wildlife or the wildlife sanctuary as it is we are only destroying them and snatching their habitat yeah yes sir. i accept it so have you ever killed a snake have i life? ever killed a snake well the person who saves a snake doesn't think of killing a snake so all this time i've been saving snakes i i have found dead snakes which were already killed by the people at the rescue location before i reached but i haven't killed the snake myself yeah no to that point <laughs> so uh, we have another question mm-hmm. yes sir i i forgot about the question that i asked you uh, in uh, south indian movies uh, they tie a uh-huh. knot where they get bite so oh, okay, okay okay yeah 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 i'll come to that point so what happens is most people what they believe is uh if they're bitten in the snake in their arm or their legs what they do is they tie a tight tourniquet like a thread or a band or something like that so what happens is when you tie something to your arm over here if if you're bitten here the venom only remains over here right the venom will be circulated only from this part to this part of your body whereas after you reach the hospital the tourniquet has to be cut or it has to be removed anyway so once you open the thread all the blood which is contaminated over here rushes suddenly and very fastly into your body causing you to have a very less time of survival so that shouldn't be done as soon as you're bitten stay as calm as possible just call a friend or if you don't have a friend just call an ambulance you can just get into the ambulance well i'll tell you you have to be afraid of people more than getting bitten by snakes because people are more venomous and poisonous than snakes or any animal on the planet okay sir so the last question so what is uh-huh. the difference between venom and poison venom and poison so venom is a protein for snakes whereas poison is something that is created so venom usually helps in digesting the food for the snake and venom is only injected it is injected through the blood stream or through the veins ivs whereas poison is something which is taken orally which is ingested okay 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 sir so yes uh, i guess uh, we are good to close and wrap up the session now yes Thank and you i so did. you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome
thank you so much for being uh, such a supportive and patient and telling us all the things about snakes like seriously so it was a very wonderful session and also uh, yeah. i mean handling me interrupting your session so thank you for that too thank you so for giving me an opportunity thank you sir what few, few words about your father so that we can wrap up oh few words about my father yes uh, so if i have to say uh if not only snakes he has rescued more number of animals too like palm civets monitor lizards birds various amount of birds and uh, ever since his childhood just like how i grew up with animals even he grew up in an area where there was abundant amount of wild wildlife sorry abundant amount of wildlife so even that put him in a uh, in a uh, in a curiosity that okay why do these kind of animals behave in such way why do they do that what does it indicate and all that so if i have to say if i have to come up with a story on how he started rescuing snakes here it is so he just finished his school when he was in his 8th grade and he was walking his uh, walking towards his home and there was a huge uh, screaming from the uh, from the neighbors or from the opposite uh, house and it was a small girl who was screaming because there was a snake which was inside the compound so my dad went to her and asked her what was the matter and she just said that there was a snake which was coiling in the corner of the compound so my dad just took a look it was a 3 feet long spectacled cobra well about 2 weeks ago before the incident of having a look at the snake he had watched a movie called ape the super ape in that movie a tribal boy catches the he- uh, catches the snake by placing a stick on the head of a snake and by pinning his head so my dad just took the same idea and he just did it it was very successful and he did it without getting bitten as well as without hurting the snake and as soon as possible he just held the snake and walked towards the nearest mango groves and just left the snake over there and from that moment on the girl who saw my dad rescuing snake spread the message everywhere that sham rescued a snake at my house yesterday it was so huge and he did it like this he did it like that just from mouth to mouth there was no social media there was no instagram there was no google there was no facebook there weren't even computers at all at that po- period of time so just by the name mouth to mouth uh, it, it spread across everywhere from people to people from person to person and that's what made him snake sham his real name is ms bal subramanya but sham is a pet name uh, uh, given by my great grandmother and the snake the term snake was added and given by the people for providing a lot of conservation efforts and service for the snakes and as well as people so there has been a street as well as a uh, as well as a road named as snake sham road in my sir in my dad's service and uh, his dedication so that's really great having the roots of such a great father yeah. i uh, i'm uh, from uh, kpr iit on behalf of kpr iit eco club and kpr iit i wish you uh-huh. uh, success for all your future endeavors sir and thank you thank you uh, and thank you for and coming and also I, i i forgot to mention one thing well as uh, as uh, kids uh, even my sister used to handle uh, venomous snakes as well well when i was about 2 or 3 years old i used to handle non venomous snakes uh, my sister was about 10 to 11 years old she used to handle cobras back then itself so even my sister has a touch of handling snakes and even she is a very good snake handler So definitely the genetics would pass by so ne- yes. next generation your son and his son everybody will rescue and keep doing this things sir because uh, so you. many people are uh, i am i am really i'm not a big fan of snakes uh, when uh-huh. a, i see a snake there i obviously i freak out so everybody okay. does it so that's a natural okay. blessing for you people so thank you uh, thank you so much and uh, keep uh, i mean rescuing them and us Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the opportunity, and I thank all of you for watching the show and staying very patiently and listening to me. And uh, if I've said anything wrong, please forgive me. And thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, thank you, you for uh, thank you, all the organizers, and thank you for the opportunity, ma'am. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you, Shanmati, and thank you, Surya, sir. Yes, you are. For sparing time with us and It's sharing okay, your uh, moments. Yes. Actually, I've been getting a lot of rescues, so I'm just uh, 
uh, keeping them aside. So maybe it's time I uh, get to go for rescues as we're uh, done with everything. Am I good to go? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, thank you. Thank yeah, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Have a great day.